One of the things we commonly have to do when we're working with embedded devices or real-time systems devices is remote debug those systems. Now, if I'm just building something that is a, a, a simple application that runs in user space, debugging is not really that hard. Where things get a lot more challenging is if the application that I'm writing has to run as essentially the super user or as root mode because it changes priority, it maybe manipulates pins in such a way that it needs to have that super user or root access. Then we run into some interesting challenges when I debug it. So the code that we're looking at right now on the screen here, basically what it does is it blinks a light. It blinks a light, but in doing so, later on in the code, right here in the middle, it's going to switch to the scheduled FIFO, which is one of the real-time scheduling algorithms that is built into an embedded Linux kernel. If we are unable to switch into schedule FIFO, the program right here will simply exit. Now, if I set up the normal remote debugging session, which I have right now, I can go in here and I can look at my debug configurations. And you'll see that I have a remote debugging. In this case, it's called Lab 2 Part 2 is the application. And it's going, whoops, going to go out and place it into this slash home slash pi slash demo slash lab 2 part 2 on remote host which happens to be my pi. Okay so I can start debugging it and what will happen is the code will start running here and we can see that we're checking the args I'm passing by the args I'm calculating essentially that my pin is going to be pin 6 the blinking period is going to be um, in this case, essentially, 125,000 uh, microseconds, 125 milliseconds, essentially. And then I'm going to blink 100 times before the program exits. I instantiate my output pin here. Now I go into this code that's going to set the scheduler. So as I do that, we're going to see that it failed to set the scheduler. It failed to set the scheduler because I am not trying to debug this as the super user or root. Now to fix that I'm going to need to make a tiny change to my Pi as well as slightly change the setup for my system. So first off let's go up to the Pi. So I'm on the Pi right now and if I go into slash user slash bin like so and list out the files we see that I have this file GDB server. Now GDB server is the actual code that is going to run on the Raspberry Pi when I actually create my remote session to it for debugging purposes. We can see that if I go in here into my debug settings, whoops, get to the right spot here, debug configurations, we, <coughs> excuse me, can see that the GDB server is GDB server. Now what I would like to do is actually change things ever so slightly so that GDB server now runs as a root user or as a super user. That will allow me now to cause the code on my remote device to change priorities and do everything else that root can do. It does cause some security vulnerabilities and some issues like that. Right now we're going to be ignoring those. This is not something you would want left in your code for production releases. But then again, you probably would want to harden other things for a significant production release anyways. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here in this same user um, bin. And I want to look at one other thing here. bin like so. Whoops. Oh, yes. Um, GDB asterisk like so. There is GDB server again. What I'm going to do is create a new file, sudo nano, because I want to create something, and I'm going to call this GDB server 
one. It can be anything, but it's going to be essentially in this directory here, user bin. Okay. So here we are. I am now going to create this program here, and, or this file, and I'm going to say sudo slash user slash bin slash gdb server like so dollar sign asterisk like so I've created that file and now what I'm going to do if I list things we can see that that file exists but right now it's not executable so I'm going to do a simple change mod a plus x gdb server 1 like so now if I do the same thing we can see that this is now in green meaning it is an executable program okay so that is the change I'm going to make on the Raspberry Pi now what I want to do is I want to go into my settings and configurations here for my debug configurations and what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over here to GDB server and instead of starting GDB server I'm going to be starting GDB server 1 which is the script that I wrote that runs on the Raspberry Pi that invokes GDB server that script has been changed I'm going to apply this so what that means now is, is when I try to remotely start GDB server on my Raspberry Pi it's actually going to be running GDB server 1 GDB server 1 is a script which calls sudo GDB server with the parameters that are passed along starting GDB server now as root so I've made that change nothing else needs to be changed I will now debug my code here and so we will see that I can step over here we're gonna get the same arguments passed in that I had before now I'm going to go in and in theory what should happen we went right past it we set the scheduler because we are running as root now if I just leave this program running here so I'll resume it we can see that on my Raspberry Pi and of course this is the danger of a green screen the light that is blinking is a green LED so you can't see the green LED blink well actually maybe you can see a little bit it's looking like it's blinking white so that blinking light is occurring because we are running this program as the super user on the Raspberry Pi. All right, so with that, I'm going to bring this video here to a conclusion, demonstrating how we set up programs to be debugged as the super user.